next. Uh, and I am going to press mute all. Uh, and so then, um, Vicar Ricardo and I will begin. I ha I do have uh, some announcements. Because uh, we we tried to figure out some of the music, uh, and it uh, between licensing and computer sound issues, we figured that we just won't bother with the opening songs and the prelude and then our hymn of the day. Uh, so you'll have to Google those on your own and sing along uh, as you wish at another time. And then we uh, just a reminder, just like today with this situation. Flock notes is one of the best ways that we have to get the word out. And so we're asking y'all to, if you haven't already signed up for flock notes to go do so, so that we can uh, send out notices for emergencies like this instance or uh, any, anything like that. Uh, we still need some worship helpers for next week and the, the next two weeks, uh, one for each week. Uh, so if you're interested in helping please contact Joyce Lucas or the church office. However, the church office will be closed at least tomorrow, uh, possibly also on Tuesday, depending on the road conditions, you know? So we'll make that call. So don't, don't call tomorrow for sure. And that also pertains to our Ash Wednesday plans. We had hoped that we could pass out the bundles of Ash Wednesday materials in the Lent at Home boxes uh, today and the next few days leading up to Ash Wednesday, uh, but clearly with the weather in the state that it's in, the roads and the condition they're in, that we won't be doing that today or tomorrow, um, and we'll have to just kind of play it by ear. Then on Tuesday and Wednesday, uh, we will be uh, still recording our Ash Wednesday service in some way uh, so that we can show that on Wednesday. Um, and, and part of the service is designed around having the materials that are in that bundle. And so we do ask that if you're able to get those when the weather, when the roads are better, to try to come in and get that bundle. It includes um, the ashes where you can impose the ashes on yourself, as well as some other materials that we're using in the worship service. Uh, we are, uh, of course, Ash Wednesday begins the season of Lent, and we will have uh, the, the outreach committee is offering to take food for RACAP. So we're doing the 40 cans for Lent again. So you can bring those cans in at any time and they'll begin shuttling those over to RACAP for the people who are in need. And then we're also going to be offering something new this year. The Women of the ELCA for many years now has uh, celebrated Bold Women's Sunday. And that is the fourth week, fourth Sunday of February. And so we will be joining with women of the ELCA throughout the country in celebrating that on the 28th. Uh, and we're planning some special things with that. So keep an eye out. Uh, please be sure to come back um, for worship with that. So, and now let us begin our worship. We gather together in the name in which we live, the name in which we baptize, in the name of the triumph but one God, the one whose voice is upon the waters, whose mercy is poured out upon all people and whose goodness cascades over all creation. Amen. Let us confess our sin, trusting in the abundant grace of God, holy God. You search us and know us. You are acquainted with all our ways. We confess that our hearts are burdened by sin, our own sins and the broken systems that bind us. We turn inward, failing to follow your outward way of love. We distrust those who are not like us. We exploit the earth and its resources and fail to consider generations to come. Forgive us, gracious God, for all we have done and left undone. Even before the words are on our tongues, you know them. Receive them in your divine mercy. Amen. How vast is God's grace. Through the power and promise of Christ Jesus, our sins are washed away and we are claimed as God's own beloved. Indeed, we are forgiven. 
In the wake of God's forgiveness, we are called to be the beloved community, living out Christ's justice and the Spirit's reconciling peace. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray together, almighty God. The resplendent light of your truth shines from the mountaintop into our hearts. Transfigure us by your beloved son and illumine the world with your image through Jesus Christ, our savior and Lord who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. The first reading for today is taken from the book of Psalms, Psalm 50, verses from 1 to 6. The mighty one, God, the Lord, has spoken, calling the air from the rising of the sun to its setting. Out of Zion, perfect in his beauty, God shines forth in glory. Our God will come and will not keep silence with a consuming flame before and run about a raging storm. God calls the heavens and the earth from above to witness the judgment of the people. Gather before me my loyal followers, those who have made a covenant with me and seal it with sacrifice. The heavens declare the rightness of God's cause, for it is God who is judge. The Holy Gospel according to St. Mark, the ninth chapter. Glory to you. Glory to you, O God. Six days later, Jesus took with him Peter and James and John and led them up a high mountain apart by themselves. And he was transfigured before them. And his clothes became dazzling white, such as no one on earth could bleach them. And there appeared to them Elijah with Moses, who were talking with Jesus. Then Peter said to Jesus, Rabbi, it is good for us to be here. Let us make three dwellings, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. He did not know what to say, for they were terrified. Then a cloud overshadowed them, and from the cloud there came a voice. This is my son, the beloved. Listen to him. Suddenly, when they looked around, they saw no one with them anymore, but only Jesus. As they were coming down the mountain, he ordered them to tell no one about what they had seen until after the Son of Man had risen from the dead. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. So the crowds were gone. Jesus was alone with his disciples. They sat around the campfire, enjoying its warmth as the evening lengthened. They were gazing at the fire in silence, occasionally poking the sticks and the logs to, in order to turn them over, causing the flames to, to shoot up. I imagine y'all have experienced that very same thing. Then Jesus broke the silence. What are people saying about me? And the disciples looked at one another, waiting for someone to answer. Finally, Peter spoke up. What do you mean? And Jesus replied, who do the people say that I am? And they answered, John the Baptist, Elijah one of the prophets from the dead. After a brief silence, Jesus asked, who do you say that I am? And Peter answered, you are the Christ, the Messiah of God. They all stared again at the fire. And finally, Jesus broke the silence. The son of man must suffer many things and be rejected by the elders and chief priests and scribes and be killed. And on the third day be raised. No one said a word. The disciples looked at one another with puzzlement and wonder. They were not sure what it all meant. A week later, Jesus took Peter, James, and John, and they went up a high mountain to be alone. Jesus felt the need to withdraw. And this is what led up to the events that we heard about in today's gospel reading. Jesus goes up the mountain 
and has a fulfilling, encouraging, and renewing experience. Like Jesus, we need that opportunity to withdraw from the clutter and the chaos of our day-to-day -day existence. We need that mountaintop where there is beauty and an eye-opening experience of time with God. There is beauty and peace. There is sometimes even clarity and creativity. But these figurative mountaintops are generally only for visiting. We are not meant to stay on the mountain, even though we may like to. After having mountaintop experiences, we are usually called to service, to serve others somewhere down below. This trip to the mountain for Jesus was not a picnic, but it was meant to be a time of figuring out the future and understanding God's will and purpose. After receiving this message of clarity, Jesus and the disciples returned down the mountain to the plains of ordinary existence. Jesus comes back down into the mundane nature of everyday life down into the nitty-gritty details of misunderstanding, bickering, and disbelieving disciples, down into the religious and political quarrels of the day, down into the poverty and pain that are part of life in this world. This return down the mountain is very important because it gets at the heart of the gospel message shared throughout the New Testament. Jesus voluntarily left his rightful place of honor and glory beside God to come down, to embrace our human likeness and existence, all because of God's love. Jesus comes down, all the way down, into our brokenness and our fear, our disappointment and our loss, as well as the joys and happiness and celebrations, and then ends up marching to the cross. Jesus comes down to seize victory from death so that we might live in hope, knowing that wherever we may go, Christ has already been, and we will one day be where Christ is now. God is with us when we're on the mountaintops. But Jesus reminds us that God is with us when we come down to the plains and in the valleys. God is with us when we're in those valleys, those times of severe illness, whether it be for ourselves or loved ones, times of trauma in marriage, times like we're experiencing now with the pandemic when far too many friends and family are dying too early and too young. And worst of all, in this process, those who are dying apart from their loved ones. God is with us in all the varied and multiple valleys of pain and heartache in our lives. God speaks to us in these times and gives us words of hope and strength to climb back up. But most importantly, God is with us in the plains, in the ordinariness of everyday life. God is with us as we drive to work, have breakfast, pour cereal for the kids, make a cup of coffee if you drink that nasty stuff. When we fix our lunch, God is with us. God is with us throughout all of our ordinary tasks. When we talk to our friends, study for tests, read the paper or a novel, watch the TV and listen to music, when we're cleaning the house, feeding the dog, going for a walk, all of it. God is with us as we work and play and sleep, eat, love, and pray. God is with us always. That's one, that's the beautiful promise that we receive as the children of God. Jesus came back down the mountain to remind us that we don't have to hide the hard or embarrassing parts of our lives from the God whom we know in Christ. For God, the creator, came to us in and through the incarnate son, precisely to be with us and to be for us through thick and thin, through life and death, and in fact, into new life, which has been promised to us. Jesus came back down the mountain 
to face the cross, to make it possible for us with all of our faults and failings to be transfigured and to be transformed just like Jesus. We too are made dazzling bright as we have been washed clean and named as one of God's beloved children. And now we come to the end of the epiphany season, the season filled with light and the stories that continue to reveal more and more aspects of Jesus's identity as the Messiah and his authority as the Son of God. Jesus is turning from the preaching and teaching and healing he has been doing to now head to Jerusalem and the persecution which he knows awaits him there, and then to the cross. So we too turn to faithfully walk the Lenten journey with Jesus, knowing that his death is at the end of that journey, but also knowing the resurrection is there. So we also undertake this Lenten journey, and we do it year after year, so that our lives may be transfigured and transformed as we mature in faith and in our love of the Lord. So where are you being transformed? No matter where or how, remember God is with us in all of these changes we encounter, as individuals, as families, as the community gathered together. And this is one of the gifts and blessings for which I'm thankful. Now, we turn to our prayers of intercession on for all people. On this last Sunday after Epiphany, let us offer our prayers for the church, the world, and all people in need. O oh God of light, we pray for communities of faith around the globe, for our own congregation, for our pastor Mike. We pray also for peace at now and at New Brownfields, their pastor Jake Fain and Deacon Andrew Moore, and for all Christians who cannot gather for communal worship. Show us your face in the darkness and speak your word of power to all the faithful. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. O morning star, we pray for the earth, for life, forming in the dark earth and ocean depths, for creatures seen and unseen, and especially for the animals who require cold and ice. Give us your spirit's guidance in your stewardship of the planet. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. O son of righteousness, we pray for our nation's selected leaders, for attorneys and juries, and for all who work for justice in our land. Give to them all integrity in service and courage to choose what is right. We pray that prejudice cease, that resentment and violence be averted. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Beautiful Savior, we pray for all who suffer from COVID-19, for medical workers and for all who await the vaccine. We pray for those enduring famine, for those experiencing homelessness, for all who live in war zones. We pray for all who are ill, for all who receive no medical care, and for those who we name here in silence before you. Heal them with your loving might, Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Love divine, we pray for those who especially on this Valentine's Day feel lonely, for those who are abandoned, and for those who must live apart from their dear ones, especially for the children separated from their parents at our nation's border. Embrace all who are alone with your care. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Shine, Jesus, shine also on me, and receive now the petitions of my heart. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. 
We remember before you all who have died in the faith, especially for those we name here silently before you. Be with us in our every darkness until at our end we join with the saints in your everlasting light. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. O Holy Trinity, light creator, light of light begotten, and light revealer, receive our praise and hear our prayers for the sake of the one who dwells among us, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. At this time, I invite y'all to uh, text a word of peace and greeting to someone, a friend or loved one, uh, since we're not necessarily uh, in the parking lot where you can honk and wave at each other. Although you can honk and you can wave at everybody here on our call. So, uh, and now we continue with our offertory prayer. O oh God, receive these gifts as you would receive us, like a mother receives her child with arms open wide. Nourish us anew in your tender care and empower us in faithful service to tend to others with this same love. Through Jesus Christ, our saving grace. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opens to us the way of everlasting life. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name. On the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Do this for the remembrance of me. And now let us join together, praying the Lord's Prayer in whichever version you prefer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily. Forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Come, taste, and see that the Lord is good. Whoever you are or wherever you are in your spiritual journey, you are welcome in this place. You are welcome at God's table. God keeps adding places to the table. So come to the banquet that has no end, where there is room for everyone. On this day when we celebrate love, know that you are the beloved of God. Come and be fed. I invite you now to distribute communion in your homes with one another and hearing these words from me or to, to saying them to one another. The body of Christ given for you and the blood of Christ shed for you. Now may the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in God's grace, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Gracious and abundant God, you have done great things for us, and we rejoice. In this bread and cup we have feasted, and we are strengthened for our journey. Send us forth from this banquet, nourished in body and in spirit, to proclaim your good news 
and serve others in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Now remember, whatever it is that you go this week and whatever it is that you do, may God the Creator strengthen you. Jesus the Beloved fill you and the Holy Spirit, the Comforter, keep you in peace. Amen. Go in peace, share the love of Christ. Thanks be to God. And for our sending hymn, uh, Sally does have a version of Beautiful Savior for us to listen to. And that's in the LBW, it's where you'll find words. Number 518 in your green hymnal. Thank you everyone for joining us in this uh, different fashion for worship. So glad that y'all were able to, uh, to join in. We are glad to see everybody's faces. And um, I just had a text asking if this will be available on YouTube later and we will try to uh, have that available, but not sure if we'll be able to do so. So uh, 
that being said, have a wonderful day. Stay warm and safe. God's blessings be upon you all. Thank you.